Hello YouTubers, um, so that's a blue, very blue screen, but no, that's not what we're looking at tonight. We're going to have a look at my Raspberry Pi here, and uh, it uh, is running the latest Raspbian distro. I've got about 20 minutes to show you on here, I'm going to get it to boot now, it's using systemd here, so you'll see that parallelized boot, it's really uh, taking advantage of that parallelized boot, it's quite quick. Okay, that's, um, I mean, it does have one of those high speed uh, SD cards, but nonetheless, I haven't seen it boot as quite as quickly as this, so hence one of the advantages of SystemD, I suppose. So I'm just going to move this back a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, um, now, so uh, this is the desktop, it's pretty much the same as it was before. Um, I haven't plugged any networking in at the moment, so I suppose I better go ahead and do that. Grab the good old Cat6 cable, and uh, we'll just uh, just plug that in there. Just give me a tick. Let's have a look at that. I believe it's that way. Oh. Of course, I would put it around the wrong way, wouldn't I? So. Yep, that's going to get some network awareness going on just now. So I hope that you can see what I'm seeing on screen. But uh, okay, so uh, let's take a look at a couple of things first. Now I'm using the um, proprietary driver that comes with it. Um, I'm going to install um, by default no passwords on the account. Uh, the default account is Pi. So I'll just give that a chance to install. Now, because I'm using the proprietary driver, and um, there's really, uh, without re doing a recompile on FFmpeg, there's really no, not much support for it, I believe. There is a new open source driver, actually, if you go and have a little bit of a fish around on the interwebs, and we'll just take a look at this now. Sorry if it takes a little bit to uh, find it, um, but uh, yeah, let's have a look. Google. So, now, the Raspberry Pi is not going to be as responsive as a desktop, a normal desktop machine. In fact, it's proving that just now to be not as responsive. Uh, it only, I mean, this thing is, uh, well, I guess I could cat slash proc CPU info. Hopefully that might give me something about the processor speed or maybe not no I'm not entirely sure how I might get the processor sp uh, speed at the moment but uh, anyway let's see if we can get Google playing nicely I might have to install the Midori browser or something let's have a look give that a tick so yeah um, pretty much same interface as before um, we've got a few uh, programming uh, bits and bobs here, some of which I'm really not, well, most of which I'm not familiar with. I do have some idea about Python 2 and Python 3, but I'm not sure if that's the idea. Let's just scratch. What's this all about? I have no idea what this is all about. It looks like it could be for making cartoons or something, I don't know. Anyway, that's not my style of thing anyway. So, um, we'll go on to the basic stuff. Uh, you do have LibreOffice installed by default. Let's see how responsive that is. I mean, LibreOffice is a bit of a behemoth. So, we'll just see how that goes. Sorry if I have to um, con you know, combine two of the videos together. I really don't want to have to do that if I have to split the videos. This, uh, this uh, video recorder can only do 20 minutes at a time. So, but it uh, looks like you could you know, it seems to be responding reasonably well. Yep, fine. You can write a letter on there if you really want to. Let's take a look at the close without saving. We'll have a look at the uh, spreadsheeting program, which will be Calc. I'm not going to take you through all the applications. This isn't going to be like a distro review uh, like you normally see. It's just going to show you a couple of things that I've kind of discovered along the way. That seems to be fairly responsive. Um, but Let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm not really liking how slow web is being for me. It really isn't not being responsive at all. 
So I'm going to install the Midori browser. Midori is a, um, a cut down sort of uh, web browser. Pretty simple. I mean, it's uh, it is a GUI one. It's not like Links or something like that, e Links or um, uh, W3M or any of those guys, but uh, still reasonably featured. Just give that a tick. You can see here, um, um, ARM HF is the uh, the architecture of the Raspberry Pi. This happens to be Raspberry Pi 2. I should have made that pretty clear at the start, but I'll put that up in the uh, the title when this is finished. Uh, so, as I said, I'm using the proprietary driver. I did try to use the open source driver. We're going to actually try and get that running this time just to show you what the difference is. It is an experimental driver. I'm hoping to show you the page that it, um, uh, that it's, uh, you know, um, that they provide some detail about it. Um, I didn't find that the notes were fully complete uh, where I looked and stuff like that, but I'll, I'll pretty much show you that now. So, uh, Mesa uh, is installed by default, so there's not much to it really. Um, but uh, now we won't use that, we use Midori now. In fact, we'll just close that so we can reduce the memory footprint. And while I'm at it, you see that little guy came up there? I believe that's from the GPU. Install um, HDOC just so you can get a bit of a visualization of what's going on uh, in the machine. Oh, we've got HTOP, that's great. So let's have a look at HTOP. And you can see here we've got the four cores going on here. We're using, I've, I've set aside some memory for, um, for the GPU just to make it a little bit more responsive. Um, and uh, I think I might have put 128 there or something like that that I've. Uh, that are provided, and we see we're using 112 um, in this uh, desktop. So we've got the LX panel, we're obviously using LXDE here. Uh, but let's get that Midori on the run. Let's see how Midori goes. Maybe we fire that up and see if it's a little bit more responsive. Google.com. Great, that's a lot better. So that web is pretty much useless, that web program, in this environment anyway. It probably isn't useless normally. Um, so, uh, Raspberry Pi 2 Experimental Mental Graphics Driver. And this is very responsive, this Midori browser. Um, let's have a look. Here we go. I think this is where I might have found it, the slash dot story. So, yep, experimental driver support, just give that a while to load, or let's right click on that. And we get some news from Foronix. It's pretty much, I think, from Foronix where I actually learned how to, to do it properly. You can find some detail there. This page is actually st starting to take a little bit of a load down on it. We can see that we're starting to pull up the CPU cycles and the uh, well, the CPU load and the uh, the RAM usage is starting to really stretch a little bit, and it's not as responsive as it was before. You see that little GPU signs coming up every so often. I don't know what that means, but and yeah, the page isn't being anywhere near as responsive as I would want. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. So that's not not anywhere near as responsive. That could just be his page, but uh, we'll get that uh, we'll get the um, we'll get that fired up in a moment. We're about probably halfway through this video. I tried YouTube just to see how that would go. It was pretty slow when I used web, but you never know. You're luck in a big city, hey? Let's see if it uh, see if it does it. Let's just find some random. Linux for you and me video or something like that. I better not do that. He might he might sue me. He might sue me. No, he wouldn't he wouldn't do that. We'll just go to like mine anyway. Let's use a 980. It seems to be a little bit more responsive in this web browser. This Midori web browser compared to what web does. It's funny they've actually enabled the the desktop by default. Uh, it wasn't like that previously. Um, so let's have a look at one of my uh, videos. I've got to sign in actually so they know it's me and I'm not getting <coughs> another view.
give that a chance to to log in. So yeah, um, so I've been having a little bit of fun on the desktop here. Sorry about my voice there. I'm starting to give out on me. I think I better take a drink of water. Yeah, so I've been just having a bit of fun just seeing what I can uh, get going with this. See if it's um, at all usable uh, as a desktop system. I mean, one of the major criticisms for the first uh, Raspberry Pi was that it just didn't have the guts. So let's have a look at this video. Let's see how it goes. See if it actually can play a video at all. I very much doubt it'll play the video at any decent frame rate at least. I imagine it'll be quite slow. And that's not... The... Oh, here we go. It's kind of playing. It was kind of playing. Look at that. It's... I reckon that's skipping some major frames going on there. So, yep, that's that's pretty much that. Uh, let's have a look at this experimental driver though, because there is a tool that you can use to put out of this. There is a tool that you can use to enable the uh, the driver. Now, I apologise in advance if this doesn't work, if it nerfs up. I have had a couple of issues with it before, but let's try. Okay, Raspberry Config is the tool you'll be using. Okay, we'll uh, go down to about. Uh, not about Raspberry Config, we'll be going into Advanced Options. Um, <clears throat> that should be enough for our purposes. We'll go Cancel, and we'll go to... I will not overclock it. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to... I mean, it's sitting there at 900 hertz, uh, 900 megahertz, and I'm very, very happy with that. That's fine. I won't be overclocking this little beast of mine. Uh, advanced options, let's go the enable the experimental desktop GL driver. So we'll enable that. Okay. And we'll then finish like that. And I would like to reboot now. Let's take a look and see what happens. Now you get uh, if you don't have it enabled, uh, you get all sorts of funny colorizations. You see the boot sequence is a little bit different now. We've got that nice colour <coughs> splash going on there from the driver from the graphics card anyway. It does a bit of this sort of um, carrying on and going back and forth and flickering to this and I, I'm not sure. It seems to not do it when you're moving your mouse. So I'm not entirely sure <clears throat> now what's going on there. Now I've what I'll do is I'll run GLX Gears. It's not a benchmarking tool but it'll give you an idea of the performance. Uh, VBlink mode equals zero GLX Gears Let's have a look at that. We'll just move this over here. As you can see, it's saying it's overridden by environment. I'm not going to move the mouse at all or anything like that to cause any uh, slowdown. I'll just give it a couple of shots. Now look at that. It just went like that on me. See? And it's doing it again. I'm just moving my mouse around to, to pull it out of that. I'm not entirely sure. I have increased the memory before, and uh, that didn't help. Not much anyway. So we'll kill that. Let's uh, pull up... The, oh, not that one. That's a horrible program. Horrible on this uh, platform anyway. I think they're just not responsive enough. So I'm um, going to let you see what I see. I'm not going to edit this and make it look good. Um, I'm just showing you that flicker. So let's give that a chance to load up. We don't need to have this extra tab there loading it down. We'll just run it in single. A single. So at least I'm getting some audio going on here through the HDMI now, which is kind of cool. So, and uh, I don't seem to be having the controls that you normally have on on this. Um, but that's probably the, the fault of the. Oh, here we go. Let's close that little ad. It's at least semi-usable. I'm not going to... The frame rate's probably not great. Let's have a look at this quality. Let's try and push it up to 
720. It seems to be somewhat responsive. Which is... Yeah, but the frame rate's not going to be fantastic. Yeah, not at all. So, that's that. Um, I did try and play some games uh, in it. Let's try and get that up. I tried the Minecraft Pi. It didn't work. Um, what else? We've only got about, a, about four minutes left and uh, then I'd have to swap over. I'm going to try and complete this. Um, so that's not working nicely at all. So um, let's just see if we can kill that. Um, okay, so let's go P kill Minecraft Pi. Uh, maybe we'll need a Sig 9 on that one. Okay, so that's gone now. So that didn't work very well, um, but we can always go back to the old driver. Um, so Raspberry config. You can actually do all this in um, in the config text. Let's go um, advanced options. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of. I mean, I'm really grateful that they're actually having a go with this, but it's not all peaches. So we'll go, yes, let's reboot now. So um, what are my thoughts on this? I think it's great that they're actually getting the OpenGL driver sort of going on there. Um, it not, all, not all is great yet. Um, the proprietary driver does give, I mean, I just showed you in a web browser before that, um, uh, you know, that performance, but, uh, and I didn't get really a chance to show you um, any other performance uh, aspects there, so I'll just show you a video playing with the proprietary driver. Um, we'll just go um, uh, M uh, M uh, OMX player, which is the uh, the inbuilt one. So, and that you can see was nice, quick performance. I'll just play that again. Actually, just you can see that that's nice, quick performance. It always runs in full screen mode though, so that's just one of those limitations with it. I haven't worked out how to not do it in full screen mode. Seems to be a limitation of the frame buffer or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, one last thing, I guess, uh, but while we're here is actually to try and get this Minecraft Pi running. I, ah, there we go. And now Minecraft Pi is uh, is actually running. So, um, and yeah, you can do all that yourself. No big dramas there. So anyway, um, that's pretty much a cover of it. Um, some pretty simple applications here for, for navigating your way around. Uh, this is not really a, des a, a desktop review or anything like that. Uh, if you've got a Raspberry Pi, have a bit of a go. Maybe you can get a chemo image uh, for it or whatever like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, please, as usual, um, if you like this video, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about the channel or whatever, that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, I'll uh, bring some uh, up-and-coming uh, interesting videos anyway. Uh, not getting the um, the views on them so much uh, as uh, for the technical stuff, but I do have an insertion sort video that I'm, I'm looking at and a few more C++ bits and pieces. I am still looking at the bedrock stuff, so um, we'll try and get that sorted in the next, uh, next week or two. Um, I've got a Debian stable that I've just downloaded to try that. So anyway guys, have a good night. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and recommend it to your friends. And uh, I will see you soon with another video. Good night.